Everybody, good to see everybody in the Lord's house, and good to see all the ones that are not in the Lord's house. Amen. Yeah, we was about full this morning, and it's like, where are they at? They're not here, but that's okay. You are. Amen. And the choir's here, most of them, and they're ready. They're ready. They've been practicing this evening, and it, y'all, y'all done good. Y'all done good. We got done. One of them said, "I gotta go home. I'm leaving. We're not singing that song tonight. We're going home." So, but she came back. So she gets to sing a solo tonight. But anyway. All right. Let's have a word of prayer and then we'll get started. Okay. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the opportunity to be in your house. Father, we thank you for the good service we had here this morning. Father, pray that you'd be with us, Lord, this afternoon. Father, pray that you'd be with the singing. Uh, Father, the preaching of your word, everything that's done this afternoon. Father, we'd be mindful to give you the praise, honor, and the glory. Be with the preaching. If they are traveling up uh, to West Virginia, that you'd be with them. Be with the revival, Lord, this week with him. Lord, pray that you be with all revival coming up, Lord, this week. The Father, that's next week. Pray that you would meet here with us. Lord, here tonight, help us to focus on you. And everything that's done, we'll give you the praise, honor, and the glory in your precious and holy name. Amen and amen. All right, let's all stand. Take a turn in your hymns to page 109. 109, we'll sing the first, second, and last. Send the line. Amen. First, second, and last. There's a call comes ringing on the restless wind. Send the line. Send the light. There are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. The blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light. The blessed gospel light. Let it shine forever. Heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. By the golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light. Let us gather you for a crown of love. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. pages to 105. 105, we'll sing the first, second, and last of Rescue the Perishing. Amen. 105. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. We for the erring one, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Though they are sliding him, still he is waiting, waiting the minute the child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, plead with them gently. He will forgive if they only believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it. Train for the labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently with them. Tell the poor wanderer a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Well, let me say once again, it's good to see everybody in the Lord's house this evening. And of course, uh, for those of you uh, who might have, excuse me, 
not been here this morning. Our preacher, Miss Sherry, is going up to West Virginia to preach that revival. He preaches each year up there. Uh, so pray for them. Uh, normally when they go up there, it's kind of cool. But he said they looked up the weather and they're supposed to be 85 to 90 degrees there as well as it is here. So a little bit different than what they're normally used to when they go up there. So anyway, pray for them while they're going. The Lord's will be done. Uh, and maybe some lives will be saved. Amen. So don't forget about that. And of course, uh, don't forget on Wednesday we're having the church supper here uh, at 5.30 to 6.30. And then, of course, the service starts at 7 o'clock. So don't forget about that. Ladies, what are we having? Who's putting it on? Brother Joe Brother Joe you're putting it on? She was pointing at you. <laughs> what are we having, Miss Ruth? Good night. <laughs> if they can hear that over the internet, it's going to be full Wednesday night. I tell you what. Wow. If we can, if they can get it. I think I think they'll get it. Uh, the ladies always do a wonderful job. Uh, we, we've never had any complaints. And uh, they always do good each and every month. Anytime we have anything, the ladies go above and beyond uh, more than anywhere else that I know. Amen. So don't forget about that. And, of course, don't forget about the revival. Uh, starting on Sunday with Brother Bo Wagner. Amen. Looking forward to that. I love hearing Brother Bo preach. And, of course, that'll be uh, the nightly services will start at 7 o'clock. Uh, that'll be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. will start at 7 o'clock. But our normal times will be Sunday uh, here. It actually starts Sunday, okay? The third through the sixth. So invite folks out. Uh, if you got anybody in your family that's not saved, maybe somebody that's wandering astray, uh, try to get them here. Amen. So let's try to invite some folks this week and get them here. Uh, for the revival, okay? All right, other announcements are in the bulletin, and you can get those and look at those. And now we're going to have the choir sing, amen? Amen, y'all ready? All right, let's go.
while the choir comes down, let's all stand and turn around and shake one another's hand. Amen. seats now. All right. Last two standing. We'll have to sing a special. Oh, wait a minute. I saw that. I think you want to sing. That's Miss Nancy and Miss Judy. Dylan, Dylan. Well, yeah, Dylan and JB were standing, but they sat down. But anyway. All right. Okay. We'll let you slide tonight. Okay. All right. I tried to I tried to give the choir a challenge tonight this afternoon of singing a part of a song and we broke it down into parts and I said all right do your best absolute best and you'll get a surprise and one of the ladies whose name I will not mention said I know you and your surprises <laughs> so when we got to their part they sandbagged and they sung very very quietly so they cost the winners the surprise because I wasn't going to give it to nobody because they didn't do it right they cheated Miss Ruth won by default and the prize was they had to sing a solo so she deferred okay all right now we do have a special tonight ladies y'all ready come on down you don't win no money up here though I don't know if you sing good. The preacher left a couple of dollars on here. I love these two ladies right here. They don't mind singing, do you? Y'all don't mind singing when they ask you, do you? No. They run in the back, they practice, and they come up and they sound good. I mean, it's just that fast. They need to go on tour. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> they, they said they were going to sing that because that fitted them. I said, no, that was great. And Tommy just think you got to follow that. Yeah, you better be on your best tonight. Amen. All right. All right, we're going to go ahead and take up the other's offering tonight. Not exactly sure what it's for, but we're going to take one up. Amen. All right, so let's all stand. Turn to page number 91. 91 will sing what a day that'll be. Amen. Let's all stand. <laughs> When no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye, all is peace forevermore on the happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day, that will be. What a day that will be. Oh, when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand, he leads me through the promised land. Oh, what a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow left, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain.
All right, Tommy, you want to go ahead and make your way up this way? Tommy's going to sing before Brother Curtis comes up and preaches tonight. Brother Curtis, you got you some water up here, and it's got a message on it. I'm going to let you read it. I don't know who put it on there, but I got a pretty good idea. Okay? But I'll let you read it. Paul, Paul. All right, Tommy, sing for Mr. Morris asked me to sing a song that I haven't done in quite a long time, so y'all y'all pray for me. It's called Keep the Flame. Curtis, you come on, get ready to preach to us, amen. I love this couple here too. I've known them all, all my young life. I'm not as young as I used to be. I just said that. But uh, I remember Miss Miss Billy Ray being teacher over at Calvary, and I was about this tall. She was about this tall. And I remember one day we was at that recess, and she picked me up and picked me up eye to eye to, and I had a nosebleed. 
because it was so high for me. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, I've known him a long time. Appreciate him. Love hearing him preach. Love hearing him sing. Love to preach to him. Anybody want to guess what the title to the message is tonight? Tommy sang that song after they first got married some 25 years ago now. It's been a while. Wow. But that's always been a, a song that has been in my heart, even though I don't sing it often enough, that God keeps the flame burning. Tonight I'd like to turn to Isaiah chapter number 6 as you open your Bible. If you don't get anything else tonight, I want you to go home and I want you to get your Palomino Rural telephone book and I want you to look at the front cover. Inside the page of that cover, it tells you who made that drawing for that cover. My granddaughter did that. Oh, I'm proud. Oh, I got a sign set up here. Papa, I love you. I love it. My verses for this year that God has given me a verse for years, for about eight years now. A verse for this year is Psalms 128. And it says, Blessed is the man that feareth God. And I'm blessed. Truth is blessed. In these verses of scripture, you'll find a calling that God has given to a certain man. And I'd like for us to look at that tonight to say what God has for us. Let's pray. Our Father, Lord, we thank you for this, another night that you've given us to come and worship you in spirit and truth. And Lord, we'd ask you to help us, Lord, hide us behind the cross. And Lord, as you challenge my heart, I pray that you challenge the heart of these good people. In Jesus' name, amen. We begin reading in verse number 1 in Isaiah chapter 6. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Verse 5 says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the king the Lord of hope. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched my lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and whom will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go. And tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitants and the houses were without man, and the land be utterly desolate. To think of the time in which we live in this day and time. We sang these songs about how beautiful heaven's going to be and about the coming back of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And at a time in which we ought to be looking at that, and this is the time in this, this day and time, we say that we ought to be really looking up for Jesus to come back. And tonight I'd like to challenge your hearts to see what God has for us tonight in knowing that God is still calling people. And my point tonight to you is the fact that tonight God is still calling people each and every day. Now, not only is he calling people to do a certain job, 
but he's calling each and every person, each and every day, to make a choice every day. Me and Billy's family verse, Joshua 24, 15 says, Choose you this day whom you will serve. And it's not just even in, even in Joshua's time, back in that day and time, he was telling the children of Israel, you need to make a choice. But you know, it makes a choice each and every day. Whether you're going to get up and say, oh, well, I'm going to serve God today, and then halfway through the day, well, I don't know if I feel like it. But it's a choice every day that you make to serve God. And as we look at these verses of Scripture here today, uh, tonight we want to look at first in, the, in what verse 1, it says that Isaiah saw. It says here that he saw what God sitting upon the throne and in verse 3, we hear the cry of the seraphim saying, Holy, holy, holy. In Psalms 99, it says that God's name is holy. Not only is just God holy himself, but God's name is holy. And I stand at awe on that to say God is holy. And as we look at that to say, you know, how do you look at God tonight? There's people that are not here this morning, or that were here this morning, that are not here tonight. And as they look at a holy and righteous God, how do they look at him to say, well, okay, I can go to, go to church on Sunday morning, and that's it. You know, I'm good for the rest of the week. How do you look at him this morning? A couple of years ago, I preached a message from James chapter 5 and verse number 16. Chris, you remember that? He remembered because I said the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. That word righteous stuck in my heart. Why? Because righteous means that I'm right with God. Now everybody in this room tonight can say I'm right with God but my question to you is how right are you? Because we get in our comfort zone and you say, okay, I can go to church Sunday morning. I can go to church Sunday night. I can go to church Wednesday night. And that's, that's good enough. And there's some people that came Sunday morning and that's their good enough righteousness that's going to last them the rest of the week. But God's not looking for Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night only. He's looking for 24 hours a day Seven days a week. Now sometimes I drink a cup of coffee before I go to bed at night. And during the night, sometimes I might have to get up and go to the bathroom because of that coffee. But sometimes God lets me sleep through it. But the nights that I wake up, God has laid upon my heart that if I'm getting up for some reason, there's a reason to get up. Years ago, I had a brother-in-law that was lost. And I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning, and his name was at the top of the list right there, just bam. You need to pray for him. I don't know what was going on in his life at the time, but I prayed for him. From that time forward, I wake up in the middle of the night for whatever reason, I'm saying a prayer. Might be a, Lord, I don't know what you got in mind tonight, but we pray. 24-7, are you available? What is our appraisal of him tonight? That we view him as an awesome, awesome holy God. That don't stand for anything that is wrong, but stand for what is right. I read a few verses here over in Hebrews chapter number 10. And I looked at those verses and I, for years we've quoted a few verses before these. But in verse 25 of chapter 10, many of us know it says, Not forsaking and assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. But down the next couple verses, for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, 
but a cer fear, certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversary. Verse 31, it says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Billy uh, is on this Facebook stuff and uh, she reads me some things from time to time. He read a, I, I can't quote it all exactly, but the guy made this mention. He said, the first step to backsliding is not always in appearance to the public people. Most time backsliding starts in the prayer closet. Whether it might be a shorter prayer, Lord, I ain't got time for this today, I got to go, or it just quits prayer altogether. And so as I looked at that in those verses of Scripture, I thought, man, verse 31 says it's a fearful thing to fall. When you backslide, they say you're falling, you're going backwards. So it's a fearful thing to think the consideration if you're going to backslide, what's going to happen? So we have the God being a holy, holy, holy God. And we see secondly here, we see Isaiah's attitude. Verse number five, he says, Then said I. I can remember the day I got saved. It's going to be 44 years come this November the 20th. You know how I remember that? I wrote it down in my Bible. Some guy told me, he said, he said you, need to, you need to write that down so you don't forget it. When I got saved, I had that peace of God and knowing that my sins were washed away. Because I stand like Isaiah stood, oh man, woe is me, man, I'm sinful. I got to get rid of this sin. I sit through a week of revival before I got saved. I remember some black-haired fellow that preached the fire down from heaven. And boy, I mean, I just stood there. I gripped that back pew. We'd sit in the back on the very back pew over there at Calvary Baptist Church. And I'd hang on to the pew. He, that, that Friday night, I remember, he said, son, you need to look at me. He said, you need to get saved. And I said, no. I shook my head no. I actually shook my head no. And that Monday night, the Sunday school teacher. I, I was on the Sunday school rule. I went to Sunday school because I was dating the girl. I went to Sunday school. And the Sunday school teacher, he had a burden for my heart. For my heart. He came to see me. He said, you know why I'm here? I said, yeah, you're my last excuse. And I got saved. Woe is me. His attitude was that I, you know, God, I'm, I'm here. And I'm sin. I, he says, for I am undone. And I am a man of unclean lips. And what's so bad about it? I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. Because why? You go back to our first appraisal of God. And he says, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. When you compare, she likes these Green apple. What do you call them? Granny, Granny Smith apples or whatever you call them. When you compare apples, you got these green ones and then you got the red delicious and then you got the roams and you got all these different kind of apples. So when you compare apples, you don't compare them to an orange. Right? Right. So so when, when we compare God, we don't compare God to something else. How can you compare God? We can't say, hey, look, God, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm, you know, well, you know, I, I, hey, I'm better than Brian McMillan. You know, I could do a better job leading the choir. I could do it. No, I can't. I can't compare myself to him. I mean, we put a roof on the house. And Mr. Raymond helped me out there. Because if he hadn't helped me out, it wouldn't have got put on. Don't drive by our house several months ago because there were tarps over the roof for about a year. Getting it ready to go and doing this. Well, Mr. Raymond, I got to do this. How, what do you got to do? Mr. Raymond, how you do this? Mr. Raymond, how you do this? And, and then Mr. Raymond comes over and says, and it's done. Praise the Lord. So we can't, I can't compare me to him because I, I am. I've never put on a roof like that. So, I, you know, I. When you go to do something like that, get somebody to know. 
When we come to the Word of God and we say, woe is me, I'm dwelling among people that are just like everybody else. The Bible says, for all of sin comes short of the glory of God. So what merit can I put on me for anything that I've done? Nothing. Nothing. Years ago, we were traveling, and, and we have, we went on Wednesday night. We went to over to St. Stephen's. We were working in Georgetown. We went to St. Stephen's, and Alfred Willis' church, and Alfred preached from Luke chapter 17, I believe it is, about the servant. And about the servant had done everything he was supposed to do, and he said, what thanks do you get from it? You don't get any because that's what you're required to do. So as we go through this life, as we go on, we need to say, okay, what's the attitude? I'm not worthy. Even though I can say I'm a blessed man, that God has blessed me, and I've got, got, I have been able to see my children's children. I'm blessed. But am I worthy? Not at all. Which leads us to our next point. Verse 9 is availability. Now, some of the kids that's been in my Sunday school class over the years, there's two things in the Sunday school, Sunday school class that I've tried, even though you got a regular Sunday school lesson, I've tried to dwell in these children's hearts. One, attitude. Two, availability. One, you can be available, but if the attitude's not right, then the availability is not going to be there. Uh, Jared, have you pitched them 30 pitches yet? Are you available? He's available, but the attitude's not there yet because he hadn't done it. When we make a choice every morning, we make a choice of what we're going to do for that day. That makes us available. But if during that time in which we run through the day, the shop gets turned upside down and say, Lord, I, I wanted to start out the day right, but everything's going wrong. And uh, then what happens to the attitude? So we have to be available? Yes. We have to have the right kind of attitude. Yes, for our God to work through us. We had the attitude in verse 5. He says, woe is me. In verse 9, we see that, oh, in verse 8, he says, then said I, here am I, send me. Verse 9 says, God says, go. We go. And we go. And we go. We hired a new fellow this week at shop. About halfway afternoon, first day, he comes to me. He says, I want to apologize to you. I looked at him. I said, for what? He says, well, I cussed a little while ago, and I did it in your presence, and I didn't mean to. And I says, what made you think that you weren't supposed to cuss in front of me? He says, because you act different, you're a Christian. I hadn't told him I was a Christian. I've only been with him a half a day there. We've gotten the witness to him through that experience. What is your life telling people? Or is it telling even a guy I've only known for a few hours, seen him just for a few hours, that he knows there's a difference in your life? That God can say, here, I want you to do this for me. You know, I'm working at a shop with five or six guys, and there's people that come through all the time. And what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to be available. What happens when it's a day that's not everything going right, and I'm asking God why, and some guy comes up to the door and says, hey, I need to get this fixed, and and and, and you know, I need to have the, the demeanor in me to say, oh, no, God, get out of here. Just don't come back for two weeks. Or do I need to be a kind, gracious person and do it in the right way? We have to have the attitude. We have to have the availability. Verse 8, Isaiah said, Here am I. 
than me. A direct call. Each and every day. If you don't get nothing else, it's every day. It's a choice every day. What you're doing every day. Do you get up every morning saying that same thing that Isaiah said? Lord, here I am today. Send me. Here am I today. Send me. It's now. Every day. What you're going to do for God. And then in verse number 11. Then said I, Lord, how long? How long? Most of you may be in here, or some of you, well, I can't say most of you. There's a lot of people older in here that's older than I am. And some of you might have been saved longer than I have been saved. And you're still continuing in the journey. My challenge to you is keep the flame burning in my heart. That would be our prayer every morning. No matter how long we go, no matter how long we do, we need to keep that flame burning. Does it get tiring after a while? Yes, it does. But what are we supposed to do? Keep the flame burning. Keep on going. We got little kids in here. Some, let's see, Nicholas, eight years old, going on nine, right? All right. Well, what's he see when he comes to church? What's he see? Does he see some of the same faces all the time? Hopefully he does. Hopefully he does. And maybe somewhere along the line, whether you might be a Sunday school teacher or you might just be a friend or you might just be a somebody that passes by, your attitude and your availability is giving an account to that young man. Over in chapter number Eight, I believe it is. I missed it. I lost my scripture. Isaiah was sent to go tell somebody, King Ahaz it was, I'm sorry, verse number 3 of chapter 7. Then said the Lord to Isaiah, Go forth now to be to Ahab, thou and Sher Jashub, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. Hmm. When you had children, did you take them to church? My wife's brother got to stay home after he got to be a teenager and they didn't make him go to church. And I wonder sometimes if that's why he's not in church today. We had somebody ask us years ago, 25 years ago, in fact, somebody asked us, will your daughter keep going to church after she gets married? Sobering thought. Our answer was, Time will tell. We can't answer for her after she gets married. Needless to say, she's sitting back there tonight. But what influence do we have with our availability, our attitude, not only for your sons and daughters now, but the grandchildren to follow? We go to the nursing home, and we go, and Tommy comes, and their family comes. And they bring the kids along. Sure. Why? God told Isaiah to take his son along. One, to hear the message. Two, to witness what's going on. And I believe three is to carry on what dad did. We need to carry on. There's other people looking at us each and every day. Verse 11 says, how long? Hmm. There's been times where the shop I've worked at now, we've worked 16 and 18 hours a day. And when you do that for several days, 
hadn't done it in a while, but you know, I'm over 60 now, and sometimes that don't just sit well when you try to go to bed and get a couple hours sleep, and the next day you kind of drag him. He won't mind me using him for an example. He was driving a bed truck. Oh, he could work off a two or three hours sleep. Yeah. Take that head. Yeah, Tommy, you're the one. He come by, and he had, they had the greatest dating experiences they could have. He come by, and he had to stay at the house because they weren't allowed to go where. If they went on a date somewhere, they had to take the rest of the kids with them. They always had to have a chaperone. So, spent a lot of time in the den with all the kids around. He could go. He'd get up 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, go deliver that bread, come by the house, stay till 11. He had to get 11 o'clock curfew. He had to go home. Go home. And then we come to find out later that they stay up talking on the telephone for an hour or two. After a while, they'd sit down in the den and, and all, you know, everything. And the next thing you know, Tommy is asleep. How long? Well, then, yeah, it, it got, he could go. He could go. But in our experience with working, serving the Lord, the benefits are out of this world. And so until the cities are wasted without inhabitants, and the houses are without man, and the land is utterly desolate, we're to keep on, keeping on, keeping on for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Which brings me to my last point. Isaiah had an appreciation for who he served. You might not... I, 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 I kind of looked at this in verse 5, and I said, you know, that last part of the verse... For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Over in verse number 3, he saw where the seraphim flew and said, Holy, holy, holy. And we have a King that we serve, and his name is Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad that, that through faith, through the Word of God, I have seen my Savior. By faith. To know that he's there for us each and every day. Oh, I, how many times that I've gone to the nursing home and said, Hebrews 13, 5, he'll not leave thee nor forsake thee. And if you take the time to go to the nursing home and talk to these people, some of them in the right mind, some of them not, but they all have the same story. They're there. They're there. Day in. Day out. God forbid if we ever go there, but one day we might. But God, in his wisdom, says, I'm always there for you. There's one lady we go, when we go and we go, and she says, you make my week. I come just to have this. One, one morning, was it this last time we went or something? She came in a little late. She said, they wouldn't get me out of bed. But she wanted to get there. She wanted to get there. That ought to be our desire, our attitude, our availability. And because of that, we ought to praise him. Over in Psalms chapter number uh, 146, I believe it is, it, be it begins with these words. I will extol thee, my God, O King. That's for, uh, Psalms 145, I'm sorry. I will extol thee, I will lift thee up. My God, my King. Chapter 146 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, O my soul. The 147 says, Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing psalms unto our God. 148 says, Praise the Lord. Chapter 149 says, Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And psalms 150 starts with, Praise ye the Lord. And ends with, with praise thee the Lord. I wrote it down in my Bible, Psalms 150. Praise is mentioned 13 times in six verses. Why do we want to praise him? We should praise him for what he's done. We should praise him for what he's doing. 
and we should praise him for what he's going to do. I've got a mansion. I asked the kids in the Sunday school class, Caroline, how big a mansion? I said, has anybody been here been in a mansion before? And I think she's been to the Biltmore home. And I've been to the Biltmore home just to see how big this mansion is and how it looks dreadful. To me, it looks dreadful. you got all these creatures up on the walls. It's supposed to be for protection because the guy didn't know God. What kind of mansion are you going to have in heaven? I didn't. I don't phantom things like that. To know the, the bigness of a mansion. To think how big heaven's going to be. I mean, God gives us the description of the New Jerusalem. It's a big city. But that's not just heaven. I mean, that's just the New Jerusalem in heaven. And my calculations were somewhere, anywhere close, like 1,500 miles this way and 1,500 miles this way and 1,500 miles tall and Got a street of gold. Just think how much gold it takes to pave the street through all that. But that's just the city. Now, my heart's desire, whether God grants it or not, is this mansion sitting on the hillside in the mountain because I love the mountain. And, and you know, it don't have to be in New Jerusalem, which would be okay too. Why? Because when we get to heaven, we won't care. But what's God doing for us now? what he has done for us. Oh, I praise him for what he has done and saving my soul. Keeping me saved. That's Billy reads an article where this woman says, you can't know you're saved. Oh, you can lose it. You can lose it. You can lose it. Oh, no, man, you can't lose it. What God gives you. I mean, I can, I can give Tommy 20 bucks and I can go back and ask him for that 20 bucks back. When we first got married, I used to ride to work with my brother-in-law. And about Wednesday, got 20. I need 20 to make it to payday. He'd give me 20. Payday come, Saturday morning, give him 20 back. Next week, about Wednesday, I need some money. Give me 20. Saturday morning, give him 20 back. This went on for, oh, man, you know, probably a couple months at least. I mean, you know, maybe even longer than that. Finally, one Saturday morning, I went to give him that 20 back. Taught me a valuable lesson. He said, keep it. Don't ask to borrow no more. So I kept the 20 bucks. Set it aside. So when Wednesday come around, guess what? We had that 20 there. God supplies all your need. And if you'll delight in him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. But how do you stand with him tonight? How do you look at him? Is he a holy, holy, holy God to you tonight? How right are you tonight? I'll say this. Every one of us in his room tonight could stand to be more right with him. We've not achieved that perfection to say, I've arrived. So let's examine our hearts tonight. Say, Lord, here am I. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we'd ask you tonight to help us to make that choice each and every day to serve you for your bountiful goodness to us. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, each and every day to get up with the right kind of attitude and be available for whatever you have for us to do. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand to our feet at the piano play. The altar's open tonight. Are you one of the hear of eyes? Or are you one of the woe me and say, no, not me, not tonight. We serve an awesome, wonderful God. And he's always there for us. I'm glad he's not any connection with cell phones where he can't get a signal. But he's always there for us. To hear and 
answer our prayer. We taught in Sunday school this morning that God sometimes answers no, maybe, and yes. All because he knows what's best for each and every one of us. still praying. How about you? Turn your eyes on Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful face he has. Appreciate you listening tonight. Anybody got a word of testimony before we leave tonight? Trust. Anybody else with a word? Miss Ann? Let's remember that in prayer. Anybody else for a word of testimony? All right, Rick, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Amen. Chris, hurry up here. Everybody have a seat.